What's up YouTube, it's JB Tech Fanatic and I'm back again with another video. As always, I wanna start this video by thanking each of you for joining me. If you have not yet subscribed, I'd be so honored if you'd consider. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you wanna know when the latest content is available, don't forget to click the notification to on. Today, I'm back with a product by LG. Now, if you're like me, you love screens, whether it be TV, monitor, tablet, it just gives you that sense of beauty and it can do so many cool things from gaming, watching your favorite shows, even editing video and photos. Now we are going to look at the latest LG 4K HDR monitor. What we'll do today is we'll unbox, I'll go through setup, I'll go through my personalized settings so that you can maximize your experience and then I will give you my honest opinion. I can't wait to get started. Thank you for being here. Let's do this. Time to get this open. Quick look at the box. It's pretty plain, but you do see it's an LG UHD monitor. 32 UP550 is the model number featuring HDR, UHD, 4K, and of course, USB Type-C. As always, take caution when you are opening a new monitor. Follow the instructions on the box. We are greeted with looks like the stand and a whole bunch of goodies. We'll go ahead and we'll take this out. We'll look at that in a moment. After removing the foam, the monitor is at the bottom. Make sure to grab by both sides and pull it out evenly so you do not crack the screen. I like what LG did here. They actually give you this nice styrofoam tray that you can grab from each side and pull this out. It's a little bit heavy and it's very, very flat, so you don't want to crack it again. So it looks like LG included everything we need, which is great news for us. We have an owner's manual on disc as well as the instructions booklet. They do include every cable needed, USB type C, power brick, DP cord, and as well as an HDMI. And then of course we get our power cord now they appear to be great quality, so you don't have to go out and buy any new cabling. They also included a cable management. This will clip on to uh, the back stand. We'll look at that a little later. As far as the ports go on the back, pretty much gives us everything we need. Starting on the right side, we have two USB super speed ports as well as a headphone jack and then where you put in your power cord. On the left side, USB Type-C, a DP port, and two HDMIs. Proceeding on with setup. Now, I love this no muss, no fuss setup. Just wanna give you a quick look. This is the arm. Here you can see we'll be able to adjust our monitor. This also slides up and down, but the greatest part is this simply snaps into place. There is no screws. Here's the little lock mechanism. So all you're going to do is put this into place and it will snap in. Before we do that, this is the bottom. Here you will see a screw that's already built in. What we're gonna do is we're going to simply stick it into the bottom of the arm and then tighten down with this piece here. As you can see, I just slid it into place. Now at the bottom, the screw mechanism, we just twist it until it's tight and we're ready to snap in place. Little note to self, make sure to screw it all the way down to where the screw is flush. This piece will stick up so you can unscrew it, but you wanna make sure this is nice and tight. Now that's all in place, all we're gonna do is snap it down. As you can hear that snap, it's locked in. If you ever wanna take it out, you simply just push down on this lever here and pull up and it comes right out. Really, really nice. Everything's put together. We're going to take a look around the monitor. Of course, we are looking at the back of the monitor. I do want to point out that I like the bottom of the stand, how it's rounded off. It helps get that into tighter spaces. You can also see the cable management. You would just slide the cables in there. They're a little tight because I don't have it in position right now. I'm going to use a DP port. It's connected. As you can see, it will lock into place. And then you can also see the power cable is connected. Now, another thing that I really like about this monitor is the ease of adjustments. Let's take a look at that. To adjust the monitor, you don't have to hit any buttons or undo any clips. 
It simply slides up and down, really easy. And then of course you can tilt it up, you can tilt it down. This can, you know, be moved into tons of different positions and I like the fact how easy it is to do and also how easy it is, again, to take that stand off if you don't want to use it. Now we're looking at the side of the panel. It is very thin. Again, you can see how that mount sort of pushes the uh, monitor forward so that you can kind of tuck that stand back in a corner and then have the monitor have a good distance between the gap. Now we're looking at the front of the stand. You can kind of see that U shape. The bottom bezel is small. Um, another thing I want to point out, this is plastic and so is the stand. So I know it looks like metal, but it is not. We are now looking at the bottom of the monitor. This does have built-in speakers. The grills are here on the bottom. I like that the toggle does light up. We will listen to, you know, if they sound good or not in a little bit. But for now, we're just taking a look at the bottom. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the top also. Just a quick look at the top here for you. All right, so let's take a listen to the speakers that are built in. Again, we're just gonna go to our toggle to get to the volume simply by going to settings. It's gonna be under quick settings and then volume. Now it's at 100. I'll turn it down a little bit here. Now I have to use one of my videos, of course, because of copyright. Let me just go ahead and hit play and then we'll see what it sounds like. <laughs> Definitely decent for built-in speakers. All right, so you got a good listen. I would say, you know, you do have the headphone jack on the back, but if you need to use this monitor for something like if you want to watch you know, maybe in your bedroom as almost a TV, you could do this because it has HDMI with built-in speakers. So again, it's very flexible. It gives you more options and I definitely like that. All right, so let's run through the specifications of this monitor as quickly as possible. The aspect ratio is 16 by nine. Panel type is a VA panel. It has a surface treatment of non-glare. It has a resolution of 3840 by 2160, which is full 4K. This also features HDR10. We have a brightness standard value of 350 CD, contrast ratio of 3000 to 1, and then of course a response time of 4 milliseconds G2G, which stands for gray to gray. Now, as far as the color gomlet, this is DCI P3 90% standard value, so it is just a great monitor for especially video editing. Viewing angles 178 vertical and 178 horizontal. And then lastly, in this category, we have an effective display area of 697 by 392 mm. Vertical scan frequency through the HDMI 56 to 61 hertz with FreeSync 40 to 60 hertz, through the DisplayPort 56 to 61 hertz, with FreeSync 40 to 60 hertz. Now, of course, this supports USB Type-C, which allows video input and data transport, as well as charging of connected devices up to 96 watts at the same time. The stand supports height adjustments, tilt and pivot, this features two speakers with five watts plus five watts with max audio. HDR10, HDCP 2.2, blue light reduction mode, colorblindness adjustment mode, smart energy saving, super resolution plus, free sync technology, DAS dynamic action sync mode, black stabilizer, on screen control and dual controller. The monitor with stand, width, height, and depth, 714 by 486 by 239, 
without Stan, 714 by 420 by 46. Power consumption, 55 watts for standard time. The maximum power consumption is 187 watts. The sleep and power saving mode is 0.5 watts or less. And then when the power is off, it's 0.3 watts or less. Included in the package is a power cord, AC-DC adapter, HDMI cable, display port cable, USB type C cable, CD-ROM, and a quick setup guide. Panel bit depth is 10 bits, 8 bits plus FRC. Frame rate control is of course built in. Pixel density is 140 PPI and 55 PPCM. Display area 91.16%. Backlit WLED technology, WCIP3 90%. Again, 350CD M2 brightness, static contrast 3001, and then HDR10. Weight without stand is 14.77 pounds. And then of course, with stand, 18.52 pounds. This monitor does support Versa mounts. Versa interface is 100 by 100 mm. The stand is removable. And of course, the height is adjustable. Landscape portrait pivot is supported. Left pivot to zero degrees, right pivot to 90 degrees. Left and right swivel is not supported. The forward backward tilt is supported. For forward tilt to five degrees and backward tilt to 20 degrees. Vertical scan frequency, HDMI 56 to 61 Hertz through FreeSync 40 to 60 Hertz. Display port gives you 56 to 61 Hertz with FreeSync 40 to 60 Hertz. Video charging and data transport. This supports USB type C, which allows video input and data transport and charging of connected devices up to 96 watts at the same time. It can easily be used by simply connecting it to a PC with a single cable. Now we're gonna go through the settings on the monitor itself. Due to copyright issues, this is one of my YouTube videos. As you can see on the right, we are in 4K at 60 frames. Go ahead and click the bottom middle little joystick and we'll get started. As soon as you push it in, you have power settings, picture mode, and input. Go ahead and click on settings. Now that we're in settings, we will have this nice general menu. Checking out the overall general menu, we have quite a few things. First off, we have information. As you can see, we're running 4K at 60 Hertz. Next, deep sleep mode. I recommend you leave this off, but it's up to you. OSD size, that is the size of the circle of the menu. Right now I leave it on large, again, preference. OSD lock, I keep that off. Buzzer, I keep that off. Now we are using a display port on HDMI. You want to use HDMI Ultra Color if you have a device that's compatible. Otherwise, leave it off. I leave it on. Display port, you want to make sure that you have this on 1.4. You also want to make sure that you have a cable that's compatible with 1.4. They did include one with the purchase of this monitor. Automatic standby, you can choose four, six, and eight hours. I leave it off, up to you. Power LED, I leave on. Smart energy savings, I recommend shutting it off to get the best available picture, but it's up to you. And then of course you can pick your language, which in my case is English. Next we have sound. Now again, it does have built-in speaker. Uh, we have our volume, and then of course waves max audio. I recommend leaving that on if you are using um, either the headphone jack or the speakers on the monitor. Otherwise, you can shut it off. Here is our input list. 
Under input list, you can see we have HDMI 1, 2, DisplayPort, and USB Type-C. You can go ahead and choose what you're using. And then, of course, we have aspect ratio. We can choose between full wide, original, and just scan. Here we have quick settings. Now, these are just, you know, basic settings for a quick toggle. You have your brightness, contrast, volume, um, color temp, and then, of course, the max audio. Now, if for whatever reason the contrast is black out or the color temp, that means it is not um, able to be used with whatever setting you have the monitor on and or the outsource. So don't freak out, the monitor will display whatever is the best available at that point. All right, so getting into the actual adjustments. Now, under picture mode, we have custom vivid HDR effect, reader, reader cinema, FPS, RTS, and color weakness. Now, color weakness is for those of you that cannot distinguish red and green. Other than that, go ahead and pay attention to the difference. Here's RTS, a little better contrast there. FPS, actually, I'm going to back up. Sorry about that. It's just this is a better image to see. So RTS, FPS, as you can see, you don't get as good at black. Cinema, a little deeper blacks, better contrast. Reader, it's washed out but easier on the eyes. HDR effect, vivid, and custom. Now, first thing I'm going to tell you is almost always I use custom. When I do use vivid, it's for gaming. Um, or, you know, if I'm watching any kind of animation, something that I like, you know, the colors to really pop. But let's start with custom. So under custom, you're going to have many more adjustments available to you. Um, first, brightness. Brightness, if you're watching just 4K or anything else, somewhere between 50 and 60 is what I use. If you're watching HDR content, I usually use around 80. Now, the reason for that is, is peak brightness is never as bright when you're in HDR. Contrast, keep at 100. Sharpness, now this is, you know, on TVs, I usually turn sharpness almost down to nothing. However, on this device, I use it at 70. And, you know, that's normally for 4K or 4K HDR. And also for surfing, I might even bump that up to 75, meaning surfing the web. But as a general rule of thumb, I think 60 is a good place. If you didn't notice, this actually goes in increments of 10. So you can't go to 65, but somewhere between 60 and 80 is the right number. And that is just two adjustments, believe it or not. We're gonna leave it at 60 for now, and just think of that as a good base to start. Now, Super Resolution Plus, this is something I actually like. Now, if you go to low, it says, optimize your screen for watching low motion videos or photos with smoother picture. If we go to middle, it provides a comfortable watching experience. And then if you go to high, optimize your screen for watching high definition videos or playing games with a clearer picture. My recommendation is high. Of course, it's up to you. DFC. This is adjust brightness automatically according to the screen. You know, a lot of people might want to leave this on. Honestly, sometimes I leave it on. Sometimes I turn it off. But as a general rule of thumb, let's just say leave it on. Now, as you can see, black level is blacked out, but it is blacked out at high. So that means that low is not available. Anytime this happens, it means that either the settings or the source is not compatible, but it will always auto default to the best available. But rule of thumb, whenever possible, put it on low. Next, we have game adjust. Now, Game Adjust will only allow you to use the black stabilizer when FreeSync is on. Now, with FreeSync, you have Basic. This provides a seamless and natural images in gaming environment. Note that the screen flickering may occur in a specific gaming environment. Extended FreeSync is a feature that provides seamless and natural images in a gaming environment. And then, of course, the same flickering may occur. Now, 
up to you what you use. I typically use extended. Just a quick note, if your PC is not compatible, what will happen, happen is the screen will go black. It'll eventually turn back on and it will shut FreeSync off. So you really have no, it won't hurt to try it if you're wondering if it will work. As far as response time, you have faster, fast, and normal are off. I honestly always leave mine on faster. Now, we're not watching HDR content or playing an HDR game. So when you're not doing so, you can see it's all the way to zero and the blacks look blacker. So when I turn this up, you'll see it sort of washes it out just a touch. However, when you have HDR gaming content, I typically recommend it to be at 100. So if you're everyday viewing, movies, so on and so forth, just put it to zero. If you have game mode still turned on, that is, and then if not, go ahead and then turn it all the way up when you're doing an HDR game. Adjust as needed. All right, so we have four modes of gamma. Now watch, you can kind of see here, we're on mode four. We go three, two, one. The blacks get less black and it gets more washed out. As a rule of thumb, mode three and mode four are normally what I use. In fact, they're the only two I use. Typically, mode three on normal H or sorry, standard 4K content and mode four on HDR content. For now, we'll leave it on mode three. Color temp, of course, this is preference. I use cool for everyday web surfing, Excel spreadsheets. I use warm for any media consumption. Um, and then when it comes to gaming, I actually switch it to cool. Now this gives you the option of manual and uh, you know, you can kind of just, as you can see, you can change to whatever your preference. So going down here as much, you know, the warmer tones, and then we get to the cooler tones as we go over to the right. I think, you know, somewhere about C1 or two looks the best right now. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on warm as just a general standard. All right, so we have six color and this gives you tons of calibration options. You can feel free to play with this to your liking. Typically, you know, this would be something like when you have a TV calibrated with a professional come to your house. They, you know, they use a special device to calibrate, but you can go ahead, feel free to mess with it. You can always reset your image. All you would do is back out and then go to reset and then all is back to normal even if you make it look really awful. So don't be afraid to experiment with the settings. Also, don't forget if all goes wrong or you're having issues, go down to general and then reset to initial settings. That will basically, you know, master reset your entire monitor. Other than that, we have quick picture mode where you can switch um, to whatever you'd like. We also have um, quick input mode, so you can also easily switch to whatever input you want to use. All right, so here is Lucky Tail. I just put it on so you can kind of see how vivid gaming is. Honestly, the latency is just outstanding. The color is outstanding. This is just a great monitor and you really, you know, when you can find a monitor that's good for gaming or editing and everyday usage, you really do get the best bargain in my opinion. Now, I am the kind of person that prefers 4K over frames um, or Hertz, if you will. There's many, many people out there that don't agree with that or me. <laughs> But that's fine, you know, we all have personal preference. And the best thing about monitors is there's just so much to choose from. I mean, there's so many different kinds, different price points, and that's what makes it beautiful, right? And another thing is, is that you can actually use TVs also for monitors if a monitor is not something that you're into. But overall, it's vivid, it's fast, and it's just easy on the eyes. I love that sort of bezel-less look to it. Definite, definite must buy if you're in the market for a 4K HDR monitor. 
All right, so we're running a LG demo video. Just wanted to show you the beauty of this monitor. Vivid colors, they're bright. They're just so true to color. The black is deep, dark. You don't see any light bleed in this monitor whatsoever. The haloing, you get a little, very, very little here and there. But other than that, you got those inky blacks and the vivid colors that just pop in almost OLED format. Now, LG has killed it with this monitor. It's just stunning, look at it. Great job. Something that most people don't talk about when it comes to PC monitors is everyday usage. You know, normally we focus on gaming or we focus on editing, but what about just surfing the web, um, shopping, or, you know, even doing Excel spreadsheets. Where LG has absolutely nailed it is they have come up with, in my opinion, sort of the per perfect rhythm, if you would, for the eyes. The text is inky, it's sharp, and it's very vivid. It's easy to read close up and far away. Now, of course, you can adjust the size, but what I like here, when you blow those letters up to bigger sizes, the sharpness and detail does not go away, leaving you with a great experience. Now, for me, I feel that this monitor, it doesn't strain my eyes like most. Now, I spend a lot of time on you know tablets, phones, PCs, so on and so forth, and I do get eye strain. So far, it just doesn't seem to be the case. Now, images are awesome, as well as text. There really isn't anything on this monitor that looks bad, and I love that. And another thing that I really enjoy is the whites look white. So when you have it with a gray lettering or even black, the difference is so vivid and it's just so nice that you're getting the sharpness as well as the contrast. So what are my true thoughts of the all new LG UP550? Listen, this monitor might just be my favorite 60 Hertz 4K monitor ever. The features, they're just packed in there. It's good for everything. I mean, it just hasn't let me down. Even with gaming, the more I've used it, now again, I'm gonna keep using it over time and make sure it lives up to this hype, but it impresses me. I mean, there's times that I can't even tell it's 60 hertz, you know, unless I go and check the specs. So it is a monitor I definitely recommend. It is something that I honestly believe is worth the money. Anyone could use it and it excels in just about every area there is for a monitor and even has the flexibility to even be a TV if needed. The speakers, though they're just five watts, they give you two five watt speakers and they definitely sound decent. Um, I love the overall appearance. The build quality is nice. Sure, I would have liked to maybe see some metal um, on the bottom instead of plastic. But again, that's just nitpicking and it would make the product much heavier. But as far as it just having the ability to do everything and do it very well, I'm gonna give this monitor a nine out of 10. That is an extremely high marking. That is based off of the image quality being superb, the ability for it to excel at almost everything, deducting one point for one simple reason, I think in this day and age, we could have thrown at least 120 hertz in there, but that's just me. Other than that, this is a must buy or at least check it out. That's my thoughts. Quickly, I wanna go through a few things. There is questions that I'm typically asked when I review a monitor and I wanted to go through them. First one, can you use this with consoles? The answer is absolutely yes. It will work with Xbox Series X as well as any of the old Xbox, the Nintendo Switch, Wii U, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, really honestly anything that has an HDMI or DP out, this will work with. And it actually will excel. But 
Keep in mind, it does not have HDMI 2.1, so you are not gonna be able to game at 120 frames per second. However, you will be able to achieve 60 frames, 4K, and HDR content, and it will do it with ease and look beautiful. The next thing is, what else can this be used for other than a computer monitor? Honestly, again, if it has an HDMI out, it can be used for even a TV. So it just gives it so many different uses, as well as, of course, excelling at the PC game. This monitor has really blown me away. Now, when it comes to LG, you have to be very careful because there is so many different model numbers and you can accidentally get some of the older models and not get the latest features. You definitely want to make sure that you get the correct model number, which again is UP550. That pretty much wraps up my review on the all new LG UP550 4K HDR monitor. This is a product that I definitely recommend if you are looking for a bright, vivid HDR screen that is capable and really able to do anything you need it, this is definitely the product that you should check out. Now, if you're a gamer, of course, there will be better gaming monitors out there, but this definitely holds its own. It does a great job and, of course, has AMD FreeSync on deck, but for video, photo editing, it is great. Of course, business, school, everyday use, viewing of YouTube, the 4K vivid image is something that you will enjoy day after day, and the overall build quality and stand are so cool, and it has all the ports that's needed, and the flexibility of the stand is something that really makes this monitor stand out. Now, I want to remind you, I do YouTube for you and you only, so if you need me, you can come follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at JBTechFanatic, but the easiest way to get in contact with me is in the comment section, and as always, I'd like to slow things down for a moment and remind you life is so short. Don't forget to love your family. Take care of each other. Go out today and do a small act of kindness for someone. It is amazing how the smallest act of kindness can make such a difference. Listen, if you need me for anything, reach me in the comment section. Don't forget to check out some of my new content and all of my other videos will be linked up above and you can also find them by clicking on my photo. I want to invite you to subscribe one last time. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you like this video. I can't wait to talk to you in the comments sections and see you in the next video. And until then, I'm JB Tech Fanatic and I'm out. Peace.